Hi, this is Elizabeth with Felted Sky Studio, here with the instructions for our Spring Nest Needle Felting Kit. So if you've purchased the kit, there's just one other thing you will need to complete the project, which is a foam mat for needle felting. So this is the one that we sell, but any foam mat will work as long as it is dense enough foam and thick enough that your needle is not going to poke through it when you're working. Let me go ahead and open up the kit and show you what's inside. So there are just a few things I want to mention before we get started. The first one is that the needle is in this piece of foam board. That's to keep the needle from getting bent, but also just to protect anyone from getting poked. So these are very sharp, they hurt if you get poked with it, and so especially if you have kids or pets in your house, it's a good idea to keep the needle back in the foam board when you're not using it. Or one other place that you could put it would be in the side of your foam mat. So sometimes I like to stick mine in my mat and just leave it there when I'm not using it. So in the kit here, this is roving, these, and this is a batting. So those are just the different preparations of wool. And the roving comes in this thinner rope-like um, preparation. And the batting is going to unroll. Its fibers are a little more going in all different directions still, and it has a bit more texture. So you get to see both of those in this kit. Then I also want to just mention that there are also the written and picture instructions in here. So since you're already watching the video, that's great and it's the best way to learn for sure. But if you want to follow along on the written instructions, each step is numbered. And I want to just point out that the other numbers here are time stamps that coincide with the video. So if you are following along, you could fast forward or rewind and get right back to the step that you want to see again, perhaps, or um, that's just a handy way to kind of keep track of where you are and move through the video if you would like to. Okay, so now I think we are ready to get started. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do before you start the nest is to decide how many nests you want to make. So the amount of roving that's in the kit is enough to make one large nest, it's that size, or you can make two medium nests, or you can make four small nests. Here's those little guys. So once you've decided how many that you want to make, <clears throat> excuse me, bring these back out of the way, then we will divide up the roving. So if you're doing one large nest, you're going to use all of this roving to make just the one nest. If you're doing two nests, what you will do is just divide it in half. So an easy way to do that is to find the ends and then go back to where they were folded and just tear the roving apart. That will give you two equal pieces. So then you'll make one nest with one and one nest with the other one. And if you were going to do four little nests, you would just take each of these pieces and divide them in half again. So take the two pieces and divide in half again for the four little nests. So for the video, I'm just going to do one medium nest, and from there you should be able to tell how to make it small or bigger. It's done the exact same way. You'll just have either a little less roving to work with or a little more roving to work with. So then for the eggs, if you are making the big nest, you'll take your robin's egg. This is actually called spearmint, but 
You'll take your spearmint roving, and if you're doing the big nest, you want to divide this just into three fairly equal parts. So I like to kind of fold it. Hopefully you can see that. I like to kind of fold it and get it in three parts, or you can measure if you want to use a measuring tape, and then just pull it apart so that you have three even pieces. That's for the big nest. If you're doing two of the medium nests, we're going to break this in half, and then you'll take each of the two pieces that's left and do the same thing, try and get three even pieces out of it. So I'll go ahead and do that since that's the one that I'm going to do on the video. So I have three fairly even pieces, they don't have to be perfectly even. And then if you were doing the four little tiny nests, you would divide this up again, so this would go in half again. So you're just going to divide the spearmint roving into four parts, and then three fairly even parts from there. So hopefully that's all making sense, and basically you just want to decide what you're doing and divide it up before you get started. Okay, so I um, told you I'm going to demo the medium-sized nest, and the other ones are made just the same way. You're just going to be working a little longer if you're doing the big one, and the little ones go faster. It's just that there's four of them if you want to do them all at the same time. So the way that we're going to start the nest is to take the roving and start making a little circle, a little spiral here, like that, and we'll put that down on the mat and start poking it. So we're poking so that these layers of the roving are going to hold together. So I'm going in at a little bit of an angle so that the little fibers from the outside layers are getting poked down. Not all, not all of them, not all the way, but some of them are going to poke in towards the middle and get attached. So that's all that we're doing, it's just poking. So we're going to be poking at different angles and from different sides of the nest, but all we're doing is poking. So now we're just going to keep spiraling this roving around. So once I get it around once, then I'm going to take the needle again and just poke. So I'm taking kind of the fibers from the outer layer and catching at least a few of them, poking at an angle towards the center. So I'm catching a few of these outer fibers and they're attaching in towards the center. So then we're just going to keep going around so the circle keeps getting bigger. And once we get another layer around, we're doing the same thing. So I'm catching some of these top fibers and moving them towards the center. And just the poking action of the needle is what is attaching the fibers. And it gets a little stuck on the mat. That sound, of course, that you're hearing is the needle hitting the mat, which is fine. That's why we have the mat here. So you can either leave it on the mat, or I like to pick it up and work it with my fingers a little bit. So here's what the bottom's looking like. Here's what our top's looking like. So it's going to start to come up and not be completely flat, but we're going to build the nest up. So we're not going, um, when we're overlapping, we're, we're get, we have a good bit of overlap, but we're not going completely overlapped or that would stay flat. We're going to overlap them so at least about half of 
the roving back there is covered up. But we're bringing it up. All right, so you can poke from the inside here out towards the outside, or you can continue poking from the outside in. So I'm taking the needle and poking through this piece of roving to get it to attach to the one inside it. So we're just going to keep doing this. Poke a little from the inside, poke a little from the outside. And at this point, we're just getting all the roving attached. You can see here, also I wanna point out, it's got some twist in it. Sometimes it gets a little too twisted up. We wanna undo the twist so that it's laying a little flatter. We don't want it to be super twisted up. I like it looking, I like the way it looks a little better when it's flattened out when we put it on, not all twisty. So I'm poking from the outside and a little bit from the inside, just getting these all loosely attached here. And once we get it all together, we're gonna continue with more shaping. So we don't need to worry too much about it at this point. Just gonna get it holding together. Okay, so we're just gonna go until we run out of roving. So if you're doing the big nest, you can use all of it and it's just going to be a little bit bigger than what we have here. And if you're doing the small nests, you'll definitely run out. On the big one, sometimes, if it seems like it's gotten big enough, you can just tear off the extra if you've gotten it to a size that you like. You don't have to feel like you have to use every bit of roving. But for this one, uh, this makes a nice size using up all of it. So now what I'm gonna do is turn it over and then we're going to work on some shaping from this side. So I'm gonna angle the needle again. It's gonna kind of be angled like this and I'm gonna poke from the bottom up to the center or really this is the top if it's on this side, but if it's on our mat, I'm poking up from where it, it is on the mat up towards the center. And the needle is angled a little bit, but anything kind of sideways like this is going to work. So we're just gonna turn and poke, so I'm kind of poking up, poking up, and then after I've done each section and gone over it a few times, then I'm just gonna turn the nest and do the next section. So this is just kind of taking more of the fibers and making sure they're attached to the layer underneath them or in front of them or however you wanna look at it, but so that the fibers are attaching together on this side of the nest so that it's all going to hold together. And don't worry if the bottom is kind of 
looking too flat and dimpled down there. We're going to pop it back out and we'll work more on that when we flip it back over. Sometimes I also am just poking around the bottom here. Just kind of depends on what it seems like it needs in that section. So I'm poking up and then giving it a little bit of extra poking down by the mat. Alright, so I think I've made it around now at least once. And I'm going to turn it back over. And then I'm going to just poke a little bit in the middle here. And then I'm going to turn it on its side and I'm going to poke Still going in kind of at an angle, and I'm going to just poke from the side here. Just kind of getting our sides a little more felted and sturdy. So again, I'm just turning it, I'm doing each section a little bit, and then I turn it again. I've kind of gone all the way around and then I'm going to work on the rim here. So I'm going to poke straight down a little bit and it's going to condense the wool some. It's going to flatten out a bit. That's fine. And I'm going to poke it from the outside also and then kind of all along the top here. So we need to do that all the way around also. So poking from the outside and then down from the top. And a little bit from the inside. Okay, so I think I will speed up the video on this part and you can watch and you'll still be able to see what I'm doing, but that will just allow us to move it along a little bit while I'm working on this part and then I will talk to you again once I've finished up this working around the edge. Okay, so I've done a little bit of felting all around the top, and now I'm going to turn over again, see what we have going on here. Actually, I think I'm going to turn it on its side now, so I can see a little bit better, and I'm going to work it from the side, and what I'm trying to get is this curve going up here. So we don't want it to be all the way flat, we want a nice rounded shape. So I'm just going to work on that by holding it kind of how I want it to be and then poking on the side here. And again we're going to need to turn it so we're going to work one section and then turn and do that all the way around. So 
I'm going to speed up the video again and you can watch as I work on rounding out our sides a little bit here. Okay, so I think I've been all the way around. Here's what we've got right now. I'm going to go ahead and put it on its bottom again, or flip it over so I can see the bottom here. And I'm just going to go over the whole thing again. Poking more straight in. Kind of all over, working on a rounded shape. Okay, so that's looking pretty good on the bottom. So now I'm gonna, when you poke from the bottom at this point, you get a lot of fuzziness in here in the nest. So now I need to come from this side and poke all over the inside here just to take care of some of those fuzzy fibers that are sticking out. So the more you poke it, the more those are going to Belt down and smooth out. So then I think the last thing I need to do here is just work on this top edge a little bit more. So I'm going to poke again from the outside in and then I can poke a little holding it like this from the inside towards the outside and then poke a little bit on the very top edge there. So that's what we're going to do all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up again and you can watch as I'm finishing up that last bit of shaping. Okay, so there's what we have, and you can look all over the nest and just see if there are any other spots that you feel like need a little more poking, either for the shaping or to be a little more sturdy or a little more smoothed out. So just kind of look over the nest and see if you think it needs any more work, but otherwise this is looking finished and then we can move on to the next part. So here, if you want, you can go ahead and put the moss in. This is our colored grass of the wool batting. So I'm just pulling off little tiny pieces. I think it looks a little bit better, a little more mossy that way. I'm just pulling off little tiny pieces and sticking them into the nest. And now we're ready to make an egg. Okay, so to make an egg, you're going to get out whatever piece of roving you're using. So this was a piece for the medium size. 
but you could have the longer piece if you're doing the big size, or you could have a smaller piece if you're doing the really tiny size. But you're going to make them the same way. So what we're going to do is take the end and we're going to start a roll. So I'm going to fold it towards me over on itself. I'm just going to start rolling it towards me. And we don't want the egg to lengthen out and spread out this way too much. So I'm just going to take it and fold the ends in every once in a while. And that's going to keep it nice and compact. The other thing we want to do is to hold here and pull to lengthen out the roving and make sure it's nice and smoothed out and a little bit thinner as we're rolling. So that's called drafting. If you've never heard of that, and we're just going to do that a few times as we're rolling along here too. So you can see I'm just continuing to roll. And the other thing to keep in mind is your egg shaping. So you want to keep a little more roving towards the bottom end of the egg. This will be the bottom, this will be the top. So just keep that in mind as you're rolling. You want to concentrate a little more of the fiber towards the bottom half of the egg. Sometimes it helps me if I kind of pinch it and roll it here. So we want to think about the egg shaping even as we are rolling here. So the egg will be a little, a little fatter at the bottom with a little more of a narrow end at the top. Alright, so we've almost gotten to the end here. You can see I'm just pulling as I go. So what we're going to end up with is something like this. Got a little nest fiber in there. Okay. So just remember which end was your top end. This is my top end and this is my bottom end. So we're going to put the egg down onto the mat. And I'm going to start at the bottom end. This was the bottom. And I'm just going to poke and start to shape the bottom. So if there's any fiber that needs that's sticking out like this, you're just going to take the needle and you can even kind of push it or pull it with the needle into place and then poke it down. So I'm poking in at a bit of an angle here and Whatever angle you're using is kind of just pushing the wool in that direction. So since we don't want a flat bottom, we're not going to go in perfectly straight. We want to keep the bottom rounded. So I'm just going to poke and turn and poke and turn. And I'm just starting the bottom shaping here, so trying to keep it a little bit rounded and get the wool attached to itself. Alright, then I'm going to turn it over to what was the top and again I'm just going to start poking a bit of an angle and then turn so just a little bit of poking and turn, a little poking and turn we want to do the shaping gradually. If we tried to felt one section all at once, then it's hard to keep it even and keep a nice roundness to it. So we're just kind of shaping gradually, one little section at a time, at a time, and then we turn. You can also take it, and I'm going to set it on its bottom, and I will poke in from the top a little bit straight down right on the top, but then I'm still keeping a bit of an angle. I just want to see what's going on here at the top, looking straight down at it. And then I'm going to turn it back over and we'll work a little bit more on the sides here. 
So I'm working from the bottom, kind of moving up towards the middle, working on the middle, and I can go from the middle back down towards the bottom. So we're just kind of shaping all around the egg. Coming up towards the middle here. So as I turn, just going to keep poking. So once I've gotten all the way around to the middle here, I'm going to turn it over again. And now we'll work from the top back down towards the middle this way. So always thinking about the egg shape, kind of keeping that in mind as we're working. And this egg is looking a little bit long still. So once we get this done, we'll work a little bit more on felting its bottom a little more, smooshing it in on itself. Okay, so it's still looking, it's looking a little too long to me, a little long and thin. So I'm going to take and turn it on its top. And I'm going to poke a little more vigorously on the bottom part. So I need to poke a little harder at this point. We're trying to change the shape. It's already started to felt a lot. But you can see I'm just kind of getting that bottom wool to compact even more. So now that I've gotten the bottom flattened out some, you can see I need to kind of round out its curves again here. So I'm going to poke there, turn, keep poking. at it from the top again. Just be very careful of your fingers, especially if you're working on a tiny egg. So be very careful not to poke your fingers. So work carefully. So we're just going to keep poking all over wherever it looks like it needs it. There are sections that are sticking out a little or that are still looking pretty fuzzy. Those are the ones that need more work. Something else I like to do is to roll it between my hands. I feel like this helps to round it out just a little bit and get the fibers a little more stuck together on the outside. It seems like it smooths it out a little bit. So right now that's what we have. It's looking just about finished. So you just keep poking until your egg feels nice and solid without much give to it. Where it's looking not very fuzzy. Fairly smooth. Roll mine one more time here, and then I think it is finished. So I'll get the nest here, and we can see how it looks. Looking good. So then you just want to follow the same steps to make two other eggs, and you can always rewind the video if you need to. So there are two other eggs. And of course, if you're making the medium nest, you'll be making another one. If you made the large nest, you'll be finished. And if you made a tiny nest, you still have 
plenty of other ones, three more that you could make if you want. So there it is. So thank you for joining me for this project. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you like the way that your nest and eggs are turning out. If you want to find more supplies or see our other kits, you can find us on Etsy with the username Felted Sky, or we have a website up at feltedsky.com. So once again, thanks for joining me and happy felting.